First, a brief bit of clarity. I actually had an error in my video this morning that I couldn't fix without having to basically redo the whole thing, so I took it down. It was caught within an hour of uploading it, and it was done so by a couple of viewers, and which actually is something I'm thankful for, because I actually try to be accurate. But I, in the end, I almost had no video today for the first time in like a year. Seriously, I haven't missed a day in a year, regardless of being sick or not. The error had to do with the video clip at the start of the video and my rant that followed it. Turns out the video clip was, shall we say, a little on the old side. Though I do still stand by that it is related to the idea that Francis seems to utterly dislike signs of piety. But that's enough of that. Okay, so it's time for another edition of the Mailbag. I haven't done one of these since August, so it's past time. In fact, I've been trying to do this one since, like, October. <laughs> On the screen are pictures of the envelopes of various letters, cards, and donations I've gotten via the U.S. mail system. I'm going to say that the mail I receive is very humbling, in that it provides a tangible example that I can actually, you know, hold in my hands, hence being tangible, of how this work I'm doing does reach and touch the lives of normal Catholics, seeking answers to the state of the Church. I'll always recognize the support I receive as a blessing, so I say thank you for all of this. Again, what you're seeing represents now about four months of letters, so don't think that I'm getting inundated with letters. And I do hang on to all of them. They now have a home in my desk, which maybe as time goes on I'll need to rethink how I do that. However, I am going to say this. If you want some questions answered, feel free to mail them to me. Or email them to me and just put like mailbag or something in the, in the subject line. I received a couple questions from listeners that I'm going to answer in this edition of the mailbag, but if you mail me something, anything, be it donation or a question or a rant or whatnot, please include an email address so I can thank you. I'm going to generally just say a thank you to those who have donated via mail. I'm not going to name names to protect your privacy, but I do want to say thank you from my family and from myself. We are blessed to receive your support. And I do want to say also as an aside, I can't make personal phone calls. I get, sometimes we'll get a letter with a phone number in it, and I can't do that. It's a security thing. Um, not because of any individual person who has, you know, asked me to call them, but just it can become a very dangerous habit to get into, unfortunately. Now let's highlight a few things people sent me. This mug was sent by a listener late in October. I haven't sent them a thank you because I wanted to show it here, and so I'll thank you here. Note the vegano, excuse me, note the vegano label. I don't get the context, but I do find it amusing, as the listener did say that I would. So thank you. I do like this mug. The uh, rosary came with special instructions. To go to Eucharistic Adoration and pray the rosary. That's simple enough, except that I live a significant drive from the nearest Adoration Chapel, to the point where I haven't actually been able to do so yet. It's on my list of things to do, and if you happen to be in the Oklahoma City area, or maybe Tulsa, uh... Feel free to give me a hint or of a parish name where I can go to adoration at almost any time, and that would be greatly helpful. Like I said, it's on my list of things to do, but I want to enlist anyone watching to do the same thing. Because I haven't been able to do this myself yet, I'm going to ask that you go to adoration and pray the rosary for penance for what we saw at the Synod. Everyone should go to adoration once in a while anyway. I wanted to highlight this Heaven and Hell pamphlet, which is sent in by a likely Protestant. I'm not sure what the message they're trying to send is supposed to be, per se, since no note is ever included, but I think the sender is a Protestant because it's full of KJV quotes. And if there was ever a funnier group of Protestants, in the K it's the KJV-only cult. I've actually received two of these now in the past few months. Finally, the question, finally a qu first question from a listener. Is the church now the false church, as Anne Catherine Emmerich said, was coming? To be clear, Anne Catherine Emmerich and others saw a false church being built over the Catholic Church, and the true church being torn down while the false church was erected over it. So no, the Catholic Church is not that church. The false church is being built over it at present. Depending on who you ask, this process started overtly with the Second Vatican Council and continues to this day. The Amazon Synod may have been a major event in that process, though for my money that, has, that is more to do with the UN Sustainable Development Goals than it does with the pagan idol. I do recommend reading the book Lord of the World, which shows the rise of Antichrist. Read that book for an idea of what that might end up looking like. But for now, remember that there will be a remnant. What, what to do about your parish and finding the true faith? You may have to parish shop. I hate telling people that because we should be able to go to Mass at the neighborhood parish. But if, you're pr if the pastor there is preaching a false gospel at the Mass, then for your own protection, you may need to parish shop. That's all I can suggest, other than that clinging to, clinging to the faith that has, as it has always been taught. 
read old Catholic books, read old papal encyclicals, or read those or listen to those encyclicals and old writings that I put up on the weekends. If it was good enough for our grandparents or for the faithful 500 years ago, it's good enough for us. I also received a letter from a listener asking about Garen Bendal. Without making this a video about Garen Bendal, I don't talk about that alleged apparition because the local ordinary put the ban on it. The bishop not only said it wasn't real, but said it was a mortal sin to promote it. In other words, it was not only not approved by the local bishop, but it was rejected. That is within his authority to do. Now, if your response to that is to say, well, the Vatican hasn't ruled on it yet, well, they're not going to. I invite you to watch my video on Our Lady of Akita, my first video on that apparition, where I go through the approval process for alleged apparitions of Our Lady. The short version is this. Rome doesn't do the ruling. They may advise or reaffirm after the local ordinary makes his ruling. And you should really go look up what what the uh, um, what was said at Karen Bendal because, and I don't mean like the message. I mean like the what people the critics of it call the heresies promoted by Karen Bendal. That's all I'm going to say. Again, this is not a video about that. I don't spend much time on it. But anyway, I really like getting letters from with questions from people. So please feel free to send me a letter with that with a question. I may not answer it here on a video, especially if it's of a more sensitive or even scandalous nature, but I do like the idea of doing questions and answers in a more open way like this. To that end, I wanted to give a shout out to Luke in southeastern Oklahoma, who sent me an awesome letter. And in general, I wanted to give a big thank you to those who sent kind words to me in the mail in general. It is appreciated, and I usually receive those letters when I need them most. So again, thank you. I, I can't emphasize enough how appreciated it is. Finally, be watching for a visual redesign of this channel. I've been told that someone is going to make me a new introduction for the video for my videos, which is great. Um, but more importantly for you, if you've got the kind of skills to take part, I'll have a contest formally announced where people can submit a new image for me to use in my videos. More details on that soon, but it has to be basically the same as what I use now, meaning an image of Hilaire Belloc in shades. However, I want it more dynamic, maybe with a background or something. Use your imagination but still it would need to be well designed using graphic design software and the like. I'll have more details in the near future, and the contest will have some books as prizes for the top three winners. Anyway, thank you for listening and for all the mail. Have a blessed day.